On August 3rd, the group Ask Tech, a health network for transgendered people, is launching a guidebook of health resources for queer and trans people in Quebec. Self-Referred will be launched at City Bar in Centre Sud with performances and presentations, and Ask Tech will also be launching a new website on the same day. CUTV caught up with some of the staff at Aztec to talk about the guide and some of the barriers transgendered people face in accessing health care. So we just came out with this guide recently. Uh, it's called Self-Referred, a Quebec Trans Health Survival Tool. We have it in three languages, so English, French, and Spanish. Um, it's over 100 pages. It covers topics ranging from access to hormones and surgeries in Quebec, um, HIV, AIDS, um, we talk about uh, just like the daily lives, different issues that trans people face in their daily lives in Quebec. Um, so this is the guide, uh, the English copy. Um, the uh, so these are the kind of different issues that uh, we talk about in the guide. So um, I'd say, yeah. We have a, I think that what really stands out about this guide is the Know Your Rights and Self-Advocacy section. Um, so that's something that we haven't really done before and we really, uh, I feel like is, it's not super in depth, but I feel like at least covers a lot of, a lot of topics um, that I think people might be surprised to see in the guide in some ways, but then feel maybe re really validated that it's in there, like issues surrounding housing and how to deal with, um, uh, discriminatory landlords, how to deal with uh, abusive cops, uh, filing a complaint, what that would look like, um, and I think it's just a pretty realistic uh, view as well. Uh, there aren't many trans health resources out there in general, um, but there are especially very few resources that are specific to Quebec because uh, trans health issues really change in each province. So. Um, this, w this guide wouldn't necessarily be that relevant in Ontario or in BC or anywhere else. In general, I find that people, they really, like transitional community, they need like doctors. Normally, we're having like hard time getting appointments. Sometimes uh, they don't respect, you know, like they go to the clinic and people are really mean with them because they don't wanna use their their gender, they want to be identified, you know, so sometimes they have a little hard time. I want to share my experience because I've been here for six years, so I never have access before to the anything here in uh, in Quebec. I didn't know how it works. So the first time when I want to transition in, I thought I could go to any pharmacy and ask, okay, I want hormones, you know, because that is the way that works in my country. So when I came here, I discovered that it's not simple, you know, to get access. And there is not, before, there was not many information because when you're gonna apply for hormones, it's like a really long process it's from psychiatric, for many things, you know? So in my personal experience, I, you know, I have to fight myself looking for information, asking people, they have already, you know, a few answers about how to get things. It is inadmissible that some, and social services too, that some social services organizations and some doctors and some medical services, health services would say, we can't serve trans people because we're not specialists of their issues. So, so, and then refer them to us. It is their responsibility. It's the responsibility of anybody who works in health and everybody who works in social services to make sure that their services are uh, accommodating uh, our needs. It is not necessarily our responsibility to take on all of this with the limited of, of funding and, and power in terms of like humans that we are here working limited number of hours. So we have to demand that access to social services and healthcare uh, be uh, be made for everybody, including uh, including trans people, and that each organization takes responsibility for that. Because of the barriers trans people face when accessing healthcare in more traditional systems, they are often reliant on community organizations for gender sensitive care. We also visited Head and Hands, a community health organization in existence since 1970 in NDG, to talk about the health services they offer for the queer and transgender community. I think having a, a more open approach, um, a more 
non-judgmental approach um, that basically recognizes that trans people exist, um, that they are human beings, um, that this is not a mental disorder, that everyone has the right to change their body should they wish to do that, should they be happier in their body in that way and in their life in general. Um, you know, I, th I think we'd, uh, if, if hormone therapy, for example, and surgeries, etc., for example, were, were a lot more accessible, accessible the way that, say, like, uh, getting STI testing is or whatever, um, I think that we would see far fewer um, social problems, um, you know, for, for folks in that community, you know. Um, and then just uh, more emotional support too and just having a more holistic approach because it's not just about like saying like oh here's your your prescription for your bottle of testosterone you know it's, it's also about um, talking about how how is your family doing with all of this like are they involved in your life are they supportive of your transition like um, providing psych psychosocial support I guess you know um, so that's something we're able to do here we have a social counselor that we refer clients to, um, there's a lot of back and forth between social and medical head and hands, um, especially with our, our trans clients, you know, because we're able to really work in tandem to try and cover those those both worlds, those two worlds. Um, so yeah, that's a really important element of it too, and that's health also, right?